G'day guys, Sam and Rosie here from the Cybermen. <laughs> Happy Halloween. Uh, if you celebrate it, I apologise for the background. Um, I tried to u remove the background, but it just gets rid of my armour here. The armor's also a bit lopsided, I'm not sure why. Um, but I am a very beardy napper. I wanted to dress Rosie up as a Cyberman, but had to settle for Fortune Teller Baba because a witch's hat is a lot easier to find than a Cyberman costume, and I'm not creative enough to make one. So that's that. Um, we have the Halloween giveaway today, so I'm going to do that in this video, and I'll just put some nice gameplay at the end for you guys to watch as well. Um, Rosie isn't too happy about having this hat on, so I'll probably take that off before I record anything else. Um, but enjoy. Good luck if you're in the giveaway. Um, this is a wheel spin giveaway, so the wheel will spin, has everybody's names on it. Um, if your name is hit, it gets removed from the list. So what happens is you end up with one name at the end, and that is the person who wins the anniversary box, um, plus a bunch of other goodies. I've got some booster packs and promos and stuff here um, that's all going to go with it. And yeah, and the anniversary box, which I probably should have picked up before I started the video. And there's the anniversary box that you will win as well, sealed of course. Ah, she took her hat off. I'm sure she's pretty happy about that. So good luck everybody. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe to support us. Cheers. Alright, so you can see all the names here. I'm just going to reset this. Here we go. Get it on the screen. Alright, so if your name is selected, it gets removed. And then the last name on the wheel is the winner of the uh, prize. There's Ryan gone. Good luck, everybody. Samson. Kelvin. Tom Lane removed. Robbie. B. Lakey. Wesley. Tomato Core. <laughs> Brian. Christopher. Mm -hmm. Vince. Mario. Blaze, Alex, Ari, Ooh, getting to the pointy end here, Philip Naylor. Philip won our last competition, so it's probably fair that he doesn't win this. Keep it going, Dan Vang, Ruben Cruz, Ooh, getting towards the end here, Nino. David Liu removed. Imagine George. Mason. Nick. Only a few more left. We got five more now. Peter has been removed. Corey. Three people left. Drum roll, please. And the final person removed is Kevin, which means the winner is Gavin McNabb. Congrats, man. Uh, I'll contact you on Facebook um, and get these prizes out to you. Cheers. Thanks for entering, everybody. I feel like you are in a much more favorable position. Yeah, if I was the Gotenks player... I wouldn't I wouldn't put effort into the Reapers that much. Alright guys, so this is table one. This is gonna be the the highlight match. Most tournaments, table one is that you know, those top players. So we have Reboot Gohan versus Dark Broly, and earlier in the chat someone predicted that this would be the top of the tournament. And uh, so far, they're correct, which is was pretty good on you. Okay. Yeah. So this is this is going to be interesting to see how uh, SS three starts off. Um, 
this this seems like a matchup where you do not want to have to take life uh, on your own, but he kind of has to if he wants to ramp. Yeah. Oh, okay. So it's SS3, not uh, Reboot Gohan. Sorry about that. Okay. Dude, um, that's kind of a bad hit off your first ramp. Those are cards that you want to have in hand. The uh, Android 18. Yes. This leader is also one of the most slept on leaders, I think, because it just has essentially three extra energy every turn. So if you consider the game going to five energy, that's like uh, essentially 15 extra energy. Um, But obviously you're not going to awaken turn one on most games, but you know what I mean. Yeah. I do also have to give style points to the SS3 reboot player for using those incredible Easter bunny sleeves. (laughs) Those art sleeves are nice, aren't they? Yeah, those are by far my favorite. I don't know if, chat, if you guys have a favorite of like the Dragon Shield, um, like seasonal art sleeves, but that's my top pick, hands down. Uh, so it looks like we're on turn two for Dark Broly. Looks like he's got a pretty good setup in his drop. Uh, he did have the Toa turn one, so let's see what he does now. We're going to see the one drop into the ball, presumably. Yeah, because he got it with the Toa. Yeah. So I think here my choice is definitely uh, the one that warps from hand. I was going to talk about that because SS3's generic weakness is that their hand isn't too big pre-Awaken. Yep. So if you just make that even worse, because they're they're essentially, unless they're negating your attack, they're not comboing out for quite a while. So yeah, it looks so this like... is definitely putting SS3 in a bit of a pinch. Yeah, and this is I think this is going to be one of the more crucial turns, this one and next. Okay, so unison. It looks like he chose the Broly that we were talking about, which was it's probably yeah, the best choice. Warped a uh, one of the SS4 unisons, which he had one in drop also, so I'm curious uh, how many he has left. Because yeah, that's a unison hit. that I don't typically see people play more than two of. But maybe in SS3, that's your three or four of unison. Yeah, he probably plays something else as well. Alright, so... He left SS3 at five life. Um, which that's like, forces that's a good him... Call. Yeah, it forces him to attack on the front side and get rid of another card in hand. Which, the ramping isn't as big of a deal as losing a card out of hand at this point. But we kind of see that circumvented by him just windmill slamming an Android 18. Yeah, it's, it's one of my favorite cards from the draft box. That's not played quite a whole lot, but... Um, if you're like me and don't own Sane Instincts, you can play that card in your blue decks to make up for that a little bit. One of the cards I was thinking he should play in the SS3 deck is Awakening Talent Pan because of this exact scenario. If yeah, he... that's something we saw a lot of when the reboot leader came out. Yeah, I think I think you just need that because if you can't control your own Awakening... And it's going to be really rough. Yeah, I mean, the leader does ramp from life, but you don't want to have to do that four turns in a row. Because that's just 
longer and longer. You have to wait until you can start actually drawing cards. So it looks like he discarded an SS4 Vegeta in order to ramp before he awakened. Um, that seems like it's going to be one of the better cards in the matchup. Um, he's not that far off of it. We do see it get warped by the Majin Buu extinction attack like we talked about earlier. So I'm... Wondering if we're going to see an attack with the Android 18 before we pass turn. Looks like he's thinking about it. I think he just leaves he decides it. Decides not to. Yeah. Deciding not to, I think, is good because you need that defense, even though it's only 5K. But yeah. I, well, it might have been the incorrect choice because yeah, the Broly player is just going to warp it. Yeah. Always. Yeah, yeah. Because he can go to four life with the leader anyways, and then just play the uh, the SR and warp the eighteen. So I probably would have just attacked there. Yeah, you're right. So let's see if that's the line of play. He looks like his drop is. Uh, very stacked, so I'm sure we'll be seeing that six drop hit first. Oh, looks like he might attack first. It might be a mistake if he does decide to do that. Okay, I think he realized it. We are seeing the uh, the SR come down and warp the 18. Yep, that now um, 30 plus dollar SR, which is Really good. Yeah, definitely very good. It it seems like the the other one he has in play uh, usually is the first choice. I feel like once you That's pass, usually like, the one I want to go for first. Once you pass a couple turns, I would agree. Okay, so this Gohan negate, uh, it's kind of a, a, an interesting topic because a lot of people were confused that it didn't work like Topo, but it does work like Topo, where they have to uh, bottom deck each time. Yeah, uh, so what happened is Bandai just took off the extra line of text that was redundant. So yeah. the cards work the exact same way, there's just less words on it. Yeah, but this card being in blue alongside with the Trunks negate is um, pretty interesting because like, normally we see their identity as negates that untap energy, but these two in particular are more like Red's style because Red got Topo first. Yeah. And I think that's put blue like pretty high up into the meta. Yeah, honestly, definitely. every color. Honestly, every color is meta playable. Yeah. So, this is one of the reasons um, that you have at least some semblance of staying power with SS3 is that you can untap at the end of your turn and have this Gohan up. And like we're seeing every attack that Dark Broly wants to make this turn, he's bottom decking a card. Uh, he does seem to have a decent sized hand, so it's not hurting him too much this turn. Uh, the fact that he's been warping SS3's drop uh, makes it really difficult for SS3 to get out of this since he does not have access to Dimension Magic now. Yeah, I think that that's a. I mean, you know, in this game, before we had drop interaction, it was really, really powerful just to fill up your drop with sane instincts and, you know, sparking and that sort of thing. But now that we have interaction with the drop, you have to be a lot more careful what you put in your drop because it could just get removed. Yeah, and we're seeing an interesting option from Dark Broly, which is the Gravy. 
combo to put two things back into your drop. I yeah, haven't I really seen that in any list so far. Um, I've thought about it, but I haven't really seen it in action. Um, it does seem really good for just being able to extend your plays. Yeah, I had I had played it for that exact reason for a little while. I just didn't find it very consistent unless you were playing four. But yeah. I can see it. I can see it being good. You're just you're able to refill your drop so consistently, anyways. Um, I don't know if the uh, gravy is actually necessary. So one of the cards that I'm curious to see if SS3 is playing is un. Uh, let me bring it up here. Uneasy Alliance Sun Goku. Because the turns that you're not Gohan negating, you could uneasy to bounce him back to your hand. And then, like, yeah. D-Magic and whatever. Yeah, so now we're seeing the blocker. The Three Musketeers. So what's... Let's see. See what happens on this attack. Uh... I mean, if he has a Chompa here, that, that might just be game. Yeah. So I think on the previous attack, I might have just comboed up into Sparking. Uh, just to be safe. Yeah, the blue SS3 player might have uh, Baby Ultimate in play. That is also something that I forgot to think about, considering how much I use it. Yeah. Uh, so it looks like we're still waiting to see if there's a negate or if we're going to combos. Yeah, I think that's the ultimate... I can't quite tell. There's a pretty big glare, but I'm pretty sure, considering he discarded his Kale. Yep. Or I think he Tesla. was just looking up, uh, ruling on it. So we do see the baby hatch. Uh, so he is going to be safe at two life this turn. Yeah. Um, but Dark Broly is going to have two energy up. So, or maybe one energy. See if he goes into. Like, so it gets a ball back. Um, I don't... Yeah, he just passes. There's not really much else he can do after that. As the Broly player, it feels pretty bad when you get, like, Nimbus or, you know, Baby or any of those sort of cards where you can't actually go into it. Like, with Topo, you can swing into it. Or with um, Gohan or even Trunks. Well, Trunks, yeah. you can't. But with the other two, you can swing into it because you have a giant hand. But this when you one get like just stops you from being able to attack at all. Yeah. So I mean, I guess it feels bad with any deck going against the baby ultimate because it's a really good card. But you know, feels bad for aggressive decks. Yeah, definitely. I wonder what his. Uh, plays for this turn are going to be. I think maybe. I think like the the most ideal play would be like an Android eighteen and then attack and bean. Um, so that way at the end of turn, you well I guess you don't need to bean because you untap three right. Yeah. Yeah. So just Android eighteen. Do that attack in your leader and then pass turn and you have the ape up on defense. That'd be pretty good here. Um, or even just trying to get him down to three and then aping. It's going to be tough. Protector of the people is coming in clutch. It's a really good negate. A it lot of people. Very good. I mean, I wasn't playing it prior to Dark Broly, but I mean, like, as far as Black Negates go, 
It's really nice. It's one yeah, of, it, so it's, it looks it's, like we're seeing the baby Unison come down for SS3 now. That's going to start picking up his card advantage. Um, it is essentially free because you're going to untap those three energy at the end of turn. Uh, and Unisons are not affected by a protector of the people. Yeah, so leader and Unison can attack without the plus. Yep, which looks like that's what we did. Um, I'm unsure as to... I don't know if he attacked with his secret before his leader. Um, but if he attacked with leader first, I would have played the unison and attacked with that before attacking with the secret. Just so that way he didn't have to combo up with his unison attack. Okay, so down to three life. I don't think Broly's dying this turn because Blue's just not really that aggressive. Yeah, it looks like he uh, strung together some Gohans. I don't know if he had one on board before or if... Okay, so Gohan's gone now. Uh, so after this block, if he uses his leader to remove one of his 30Ks, he can play another Gohan. Yeah, I think but this it looks is like the turn to make or end. break. Yeah, so this may be the last turn of the game. We do have five energy up, so we... I mean, it's pretty telegraphed that there's an ape in hand at this point. Or at least that's what I would be concerned about. Um, but it also could just be, you know, a bunch of negates. Alright, so we're starting with the blocker. I don't know if I would have started there. Um, I think I would have probably swung with the two on board and then gotten rid of them so that I could play those first. Like maybe do the one from hand and try to bait the ape and then from there use the one that warps something from boards so you can get rid of the ape after that. Yeah, I'm kind of curious to see if he's running a secret rare. Chat, what do you guys think is the best secret for Dark Broly? There, there's a lot of good options, um, but there's no definitive like best one. Which one are you guys playing? And why are you playing it? I want to know. Let's see, another Gohan. Yep. So it looks like he's just going to have a lot of negates, the SS3 player is. And whether or not Broly will be able to tear through those, I'm not sure. Yeah, I mean, I've, I can't see too well the Dark Broly player's hand size, but it doesn't it's look five very cards. large. Yeah. So five swings max currently. Yep, so another D magic. So I'd and be weary of a second Gohan here. I mean, I think if you attack and he drops a second Gohan, you uh, you probably just pass. Yeah, probably try and gain some sort of value. Okay, no second Gohan, but a D magic. Uh, four cards in hand for the SS3 player. So, I mean, it, if he can dig through this and has a Champa, I think that's game. Yep, he just has to hope that uh, eventually there's not. Oh, we do see another Gohan. Yep. So, so I, I think, think this that wraps is up where the we term. Just pass. Yep, I agree. Just pass. Maybe use some of your energy because Black doesn't have that many counterplays, so use it to draw some cards somehow, play some one drops, do whatever. But other than that, your turn is basically over. I mean, yeah. The problem is he has no way to get rid of all three of the Broly's on board, so there's no way for him to like replay them and get any value this turn. 
He could play a one drop Toa and sack one of them. Uh, if he has the Toa, I think he should sack the blocker and then replay it somehow by warping six or you know Broly or whatever. Uh, that way he has a 30k blocker. Yeah, it looks like he's just passing though. Yeah. Um, so. I actually would have been inclined with that play to get rid of the one that can hit their hand because SS3 only had like two cards in hand. True. So now if we see something like, oh, like Windmill Slam, uh, SS4 Vegeta... Uh, it's pretty good, or I think an Obuni just ends the game unless he's sitting on like double protector of the people or something like that. Or even one protector of the people. It makes swinging, it makes Obuni extremely awkward. Oh, there's the protector. We see this, the second one in the deck, which we know that the deck does play too, typically. But yeah, I, that I, I thought Broly was going to die this turn, but probably not after that. Yeah, so I think here uh, he should swing with leader so he doesn't get a boost. Looks like he's swinging battle card, though. Which is also fine because he's a 25k. Yeah, which means on the third Gohan... Um, It'll be... Uh, he'll have to combo onto it. Or no. They, they should be even at that point. Yeah, it'll be parity. Um, I still like swinging with leader before doing anything else. Just to get that card draw. But it looks like we're going to cash in our unison. Uh, that definitely signals that I have an ape in hand. It's situations like this where I think that the VegX mill Kai puts in a lot of work because it would be 0 10 right now. Yeah, definitely. And with Power Burst, he could have grabbed it if it was in the drop or warp. Yeah, and that could effectively have taken care of three attacks one from the initial combo, uh, one from Power Bursting, and then a third from using the Kai again. Yeah, especially combined with Protector of the People. Yeah, so it's interesting that he goes in with the Hatchiac first. And I guess yeah, it so. is your biggest attack. Um, but well, you also have to... Combos. You're like forced to dump on this, and if somehow it doesn't go through, your Gohan doesn't uh, doesn't deal damage now. Because when it attacks, you'll get that plus five from Protector, so it'll be out of range. Yeah, it looks like. Yeah, no, I, think... I don't think he cares. I think he's. Yeah, he's, he's just all in. Dark Broly, you don't have it. So it's 60, 75. Yeah, they scooped it up. Okay, so. Baby Hatch got it with that 40k base power. I mean, it's a strong card. It just goes to a test. 40k beater. Thanks for watching, guys. Remember to like and subscribe to keep up to date on all the Dragon Ball Super content. Um, we want to thank Grand J Games for all their support and remind you to use the code CYBERMAN5 at grandjgames.com for 5% off all your singles needs. Cheers.